And I recognize for most of us, yea, maybe for all of us in here, that faith is not easy. Oh, it's, it's easy to say, I believe God, but, but when you're going through something, Hello. can you still hold on? When you're, when you're back against the wall and all of the reports that are coming to you from the doctors and the counselors and the professionals and, and your boss and all those people around you are negative and your back is against the wall and you find yourself between a rock and a hard place, can you still believe the word of God and still open up your mouth and bless the name of God anyhow? That is praise. See, praise, praise is not when we come in here and we sing songs to God. I mean, praise is when you're going through drama in your life. And yet you still have the, the spiritual awareness to recognize that this is not flesh and blood. This is spiritual warfare. And the only way for me to defeat the enemy that's attacking me and trying to bring me into my past is to declare what God is going to do in my future. And so I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Why? Because I know the type of God that I serve. And though right now it might, I might be going through a rough time, this is not the end of the story. Right. Uh, uh, the reality is that I'm sensitive. And, I, and I, feel, I feel that what has happened in many of our lives, even mine at times, is that we, can, we believe the promise of God for healing, reconciliation, restoration, for peace, for financial stability, for a stable job, for um, a companion. We believe the, 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 the promises of God. And we come to church and we feel good. God spoke to me. Praise team was tight. Sermon was on point. I leave here pumped. I go home and I go home and I go to a good meal with friends, family and friends. We're talking. I'm excited. They leave. Saturday night comes. I'm still pumped. Sunday night, Sunday morning comes. And I'm still experiencing the residue of Saturday before. And I just feel like God is going to do something great in my life. I'm excited. Uh, and then Monday comes. And that brother's still acting a fool. Tuesday comes and your child's still not at home. Wednesday comes and the report is still negative. Mm -hmm. Thursday comes and it gets worse than what it was on Monday. Mm. Friday comes and you barely hang it on by a thread. Saturday morning comes and you come into the house of you barely make it into the house of God. Hard. And the praise team comes and they're saying, hey, let's praise the Lord. And you're like, for what? <laughs> I praised the Lord last week and it just got worse. Mm -hmm. Why would I praise the Lord this week? That's the way For we it could get worse, sir. <laughs> I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> and what we have experienced. The testing of our faith. Is a time gap. It's a gap between what I'm experiencing and what I'm expecting. It's a time gap. It's called... A delay. The interim period. And for so many of us, it is during the delay Most that our faith fails. Yes. Oh, if, I, if I believed him on Saturday, and if he moved on Sunday, oh man, it would have been awesome. But yeah. I believed him on Saturday, and Sunday came, and Monday came, and Tuesday got worse, and Wednesday got even worse, and Thursday was even worse. And now Friday, and you have just experienced the delay. Mm -hmm. And for many of us, not only does our faith fail in the delay, but for many of us, our faith dies <laughs> in the delay. So true. And when we get to the end or in the middle of the delay, we're looking around at our circumstances, and we can't even hear the promises of God because it's gotten so bad right here. And we can't even conceptualize the movement of God, the divine movement, because all we can see is the foolishness that we're dealing with right now. We can't even begin to lift our eyes above our situation to even see what God might be trying to do in our life because we're so bogged down by what's taking place and the delay has taken hold of us. But what I want to tell you today is that every man and woman of God that walk this earth and that God has characterized as a man or woman of God have experienced the delay. Mm -hmm. The delay is a part of the journey. God, I pray for reconciliation. It still hasn't happened. God, I pray for healing. It still hasn't happened. God, I pray for your divine movement. It still hasn't happened. 
The delay is necessary. The delay is not a reflection on your lack of faith. Process. The delay is actually necessary to build your faith. Process. Because if you got everything that you wanted, when you wanted it, you would be God. Spoiled brat. But God allows the delay yeah. Yeah. in your life so that to remind you that you ain't God. Yeah. Keep I'm God. <laughs> and I do what I want to do, when I want to do it, and what I'm expecting from you is for you just to wait on me. Trust. Because I make all things beautiful in my time. Right. I've never showed up late. I've <laughs> never been negligent. I'm not absentee. I don't abdicate my responsibilities. I'm God. And if you just wait on me. Hmm. See, 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 some of y'all say, okay, I, I got a delay. I got a delay. Pastor, I'm feeling you. I got a delay. I can wait a week. A week? A week? Can we give God a week? Maybe someone two weeks? Anyone willing to give God two weeks? God, I'll give you two weeks. <laughs> Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 18. God came to Abraham and said, Abraham, you will be the father of many nations. Your offspring will inherit the earth. Everything you touch, you will be blessed. I will give you a child from your own, from, from the womb of your wife. Took years. Abraham was 75 when that promise came to him. <laughs> Abraham did not experience the fulfillment of the promise until he was 100 years old. Look at that. Abraham went through a 25-year delay. Yes. Hardest part. Exactly. And you talking about, God, I gave you a week. <laughs> God, I gave you a month. Listen up, saints. God, I gave you six months, God. 25 years. Mm -hmm. And guess what Abraham did? He did what all of us do. Trying to fix that thing himself. That's right. Got a mess. God, I heard your word. I'm certain you said I was going to be give birth to a child. Uh, it ain't happened yet, and we showed enough trying. Uh, uh, maybe we should try something else. There you go. And so Abraham went and took that situation into his own hands. And made a mess. And tried to expedite the promise of God in his life. His own way. I, I, I want to show you. I want to show you what what uh, one of my favorite authors, Ellen White, says about this. Let's can we put this put this on the screen. I want to show you this. I want to show you this. She says Abraham. Abraham had accepted without question the promise of a son. But what happened? But what happened? But he did not wait for God to fulfill His word in His own time and way. A delay was permitted <laughs> to test his faith. In the power of God. But he failed to endure the trial. That's it. Thinking it impossible that a child should be given her in her old age, Sarah suggested as a plan by which the divine purpose might be fulfilled that one of her handmaids should be taken by Abraham as a what? Secondary wife. It messy. Abraham's marriage with Hagar resulted in what? Not only to his own household, but to future generations. <laughs> and even now, the war that is raging around the world between the Jews and the Muslims is a result of Abraham not waiting on God. Look at that. Look at that. Ripples. It's a delay, y'all. Mm. Noah experienced a delay. Noah received the promise of God. Like a good soldier, he went forward and started building the ark. The ark was built. He went into the ark. The door of the ark was shut by mysterious hands. And from day one to day seven, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. well, some of us might be like, that's the type of delay I can endure. I, can, I got seven days. I can do seven days. Listen, Abraham was shut up in an ark with smelly animals. That's right. I mean, I'm talking about manure and foolishness coming up out of them. I'm talking about Abraham, y'all, was in an ark. Excuse me, excuse me. Noah, Noah, Noah <laughs> was in an ark. I need to help me preach this thing, y'all. He was in an ark. 
And not just was he in the ark with, with animals of every sort, but the people outside that he had preached to for over 100 years were outside the ark. Except taunting him and reviling him and, 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 ha and, and making sport of his decision. And for seven days, it did not rain. And for seven days, I'm sure Noah had to sit there and say, Lord, did I, I knew I heard your word clearly. <laughs> that I wasn't mistaken when you told me to build this ark. And along the way, I've seen your hand move. God, what are you doing right now? Mm -hmm. And Noah, a human just like the rest of us, I'm sure he was tempted to doubt God during the delay. Mm -hmm. Joseph experienced the delay. Oh, boy. Big time. Was it Genesis? Genesis 28, I think, maybe? Mm -hmm. Word of God comes to Joseph in a dream that one day he would see his, his sons, his, his brothers, bow down to him. Joseph went and began to share the dream. Joseph was 17 years old when he received that dream. 13 years later, the dream was fulfilled. How long can you wait? Joseph's dream lasted 13 years and, and, and Joseph might have had to go through some stuff that none of us have had to go through at times betrayed and, and put in prison and, and forgotten about and sold into slavery it's almost as if God gave him a vision and then everything possible to undermine that vision happened right and for 13 years, I can imagine that Joseph was like, Lord, I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't doubt what you told me, but what is going on right here? That around me, everything around me, everything around me, uh, it, it undermined and it, and, it, and it spoke against what I believe, God, you confirmed in my spirit you were going to do. What is going on? And Joseph endured a delay. So let's just reason here with me. Let's reason. If Abraham experienced a delay and Noah experienced a delay and Joseph experienced a delay and I didn't have time to read all the stories, but I'm sure there's other men of God who and women of God who experienced a delay. What makes you think you don't have to experience no delay?